Say hi. He's my heart. He's my love. Uh, um. Hello everyone, my name is Greta. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. And today's video is actually requested by a couple of people. And um, on the topic of how I got my period back. So I am somebody that is no stranger to this. I have lost my period twice. Um, the first time was due to my eating disorder and the second time around was due to a mix of reasons. But the top two was a combination of me getting off the pill and me also being stressed. Um, you will not believe the amount, like uh, how stress can impact you. And not only was I stressed, I basically was just going through a really, just like really depressive stage in my life. And it was just, everything felt heavy in my life. Like everything felt like it was such a burden. And anyways, so that was basically the reason why I lost my period is because, um, it causes your hormones, especially as women, causes your hormones to get completely out of whack. Your cortisol level, which is like your stress hormone basically, like rises. And it just took over. Um, it was not a good period in my life. So ultimately, what I'm going to talk about is the steps that I took personally that worked for me in getting my period back. So let's just like get right into it. Um, the first step that I took was taking over my nutrition. And what I mean by that is what happened during this period of my life is I stopped taking care of myself and I stopped, I, I'm somebody that was always like, I paid, a, I pay a lot of attention to what I eat. And during this period, I just completely stop caring so I was under eating overeating like I just didn't care whatever like I ultimately did not care and by me under eating it causes stress on your body because it your body your like body will literally start thinking that it's not it's like in a stressful situation and it's not gonna get food again and there's a reason why you're under eating um but I, at the time, I didn't care. So when I started really taking charge and really actively trying to get my period back, my calories went up. So I was eating, I don't even know, but at like estimated around like 16 to 1700 calories a day. And right now I'm eating about 2300 calories a day, which is obviously it's a pretty big jump. I'm eating a lot of carbs. I'm eating good, a good amount of fat, a good amount of protein. And I genuinely believe that like, the food helped so much. I don't think there's like a miracle food in the sense of like, I, I was like reading online and a lot of like some, some like random stuff will say that like, oh, there's a specific food that will help regulate your period or stuff like that. And I don't know, none of that has yet to work for me, but I think just, it's just getting in a good amount of food in your system. And I don't mean just like eating like a bag of potato chips. I mean, getting in like healthy, good for you food really helped in just making me feel better um because on top of like stressing about everything else I was also stressing about how I was like looking and that doesn't help so when I started putting that focus on me it took that away because I was more accepting of how I look because I'm like you know what I'm doing the best that I can and this is what I look like right now and it just I could feel myself like not be as stressed out about that one thing in my life so number two would be I stopped over exercising. I cut back on cardio. Um, if you are somebody that is exercising like two hours a day, I highly advise you to stop um, because that is unnecessary stress on your body. I was basically doing the stair machine for like half an hour to 45 minutes and then I was also weightlifting for about an hour maybe more so that's a lot of working out for no reason like you do not unless you're like an athlete unless you're like 
trying to you know do like a bikini competition or something there's really no reason for you to be in the gym for that extended period of time and doing that much cardio every single day i was doing it because i had all these pent-up emotions in me and the gym just became like my therapy honestly like it was my time to get away from everything i could put my headphones on blast music and ignore the world and that's what it turned into but in turn, it was putting all this like added stress on my body. I was feeling fatigued all the time. I wasn't recovering from my workouts. Like it got to the point that I wasn't just sore. I was like, my joints were hurting. Like I couldn't even do a squat without my, like I could feel it on my knees because everything hurt because I was so overworked. So right now, the cardio I do is basically a 10 to 15 minute warm up at the gym, usually walking on the treadmill at an incline. And then my goal is just to get 10,000 steps in every single day. And that's it. That's the amount of cardio that I'm doing. And it's a healthy amount. Unless you are like, I don't know. It's just, if you don't have your period, you need to lower down the amount you're exercising usually because it's adding more stress onto your body. And I'm not, again, I'm not a medical professional, but I don't recommend you like completely cutting out all activity. I just think it needs to be slightly decreased just to like feel, let your body feel a little bit more relaxed versus putting all this pressure on it. Number three, was find something that, like you feel is relaxed and so that could be taking a walk that could be reading that could be like whatever in your head you think is relaxing to me it was going back to yoga classes and it was meditation um yoga is a big part of my life and unfortunately what happens when i go through like a rough patch in my life is i tend to like pull away from it and it's simply because it is such a spiritual practice at least for me and it is very energy based and what happens when I get on my mat is if I'm feeling really sad all that emotion will be really heightened up for me and it's like it's almost necessary though because I feel like we often avoid the uncomfortable and we often avoid the things that we need like we know we have to do, but we avoid doing it because we know it's gonna lead to this like uncomfortableness, but you have to go through that uncomfortable period to get to like the other side, basically. So I started making myself go and what happened is like, yes, it was hard, but at the same time I was leaving class feeling so relaxed and I was feeling like I was going into class seeing these like people that I hadn't seen in so long and you know, they had my best intention at heart and they were hugging me and they were there for me and they were providing me like the support and love that I so needed at this time. And it like reminded me of like, I don't know, as bad as it is to say, it's like I was at this like really dark place in my life where I just like self, I really wanted to self isolate. And when you're around the community like that, it almost reminds you of the love that is out there um, which might sound kind of like corny to say but it really does because when you get in your head so much and you're so negative all the time it's really easy to not be able to see the good in things and when you're surrounded by people like that it's really hard to see like the bad side of everything because it's just a reminder of like all right like I have people by my side I have people that like love me and care about me and want want to see me happy So that helped, that was like a driving factor. And then alongside yoga came meditation because meditation, if you've never tried it, I really encourage you to. So there is an app called Insight Timer, which I think I've talked about before, but it's completely free. They have thousands of free guided meditations on there and I really encourage you to try it. Um, I, like, I, even if it's for five minutes, it, I would do it in the morning and it's just because it was a great way to start my morning and set the tone for the day and like I'm going to be honest I had most of my mornings when I was waking up involved me having really negative thoughts and and the more I thought about it it puts stress on my on me so instead of like letting those thoughts run rampant 
I instead started my day with meditation and that cleared up my head. It made room for everything else. It made room for the positive things to come in. And it just set a really positive tone for the day. Number four was sleep. Um, I became a little bit of a night owl, which I'm normally not. I wasn't sleeping. I was, I literally felt like a zombie. Um, I couldn't fall asleep because all I was thinking about was, you know, what had happened. I was thinking about my broken heart. I was thinking about the pain and it just, my mind was running. It, my mind was just like a million miles an hour and I tried shutting it off. Like I would try to like watch YouTube videos or something like that just to try to help focus on something else. And it just wasn't working. Like I could not fall asleep. And even when I fell asleep, I would wake up like in the middle of the night, I would be up at like two in the morning and then be up to like four. So it was just horrendous. So what I started doing is kind of putting in like a bedtime almost, like a bedtime routine. And what helped me was journaling and reading. Um, it was just two things that like got me off my phone. And then I was also just like winding down. Like it, I feel like the, once you have a routine set, your, my, your brain will honestly start knowing like, all right, like we're in bed, we're reading. It means that we're about to go to sleep. So it was pretty difficult the first like night or two. But after a while, it just became such a habit of like, it's just time to go to bed. Like, just go to bed. And it, it really worked. And I'm somebody that like, I tend to struggle with sleep a little bit. I have no issues like falling asleep during like a movie or TV show or whatever. But when it comes to like bedtime sleeping, I struggle with it. And I never struggled more than these past few months. So getting that down, getting my sleep like situated was amazing because I stopped feeling like tired in the morning. I stopped feeling like a zombie during my day. And all of a sudden I felt alive. Like I felt like I had all of this energy and it was amazing, honestly. And the last tip, which is the one that's honestly going to sound kind of odd. Um, but I started practicing a lot of, um, Reiki and there is another like inner healing energy work and I can't remember what it's called honestly but I'm fortunate that um my hairdresser and one of my uh she has become a friend of mine is very into like similar things that I am and she's very into like inner healing and things like that and she had just taken the workshop and gotten trained in this like it's similar to Reiki, it's energy work, but it's like opening your heart. And it's honestly like nothing I have ever experienced. Um, and I went, I did it twice with her and then I had Reiki sessions done twice. And some people believe it, some people don't. And I feel like if you've never tried it, then you, you really can't say anything about it. But I just feel like there's people that think that Reiki is like complete nonsense, but you've also never tried it. And in this sense, um, this like inner healing work, it brought up a lot of stuff for me and I had different experiences every single time. So when I went to, um, my, my friend, um, the first time she worked on me, it was this feeling of like, electricity was moving all over me like I felt this like shock from my legs and it worked all its way up um and then the next day I felt renewed like I felt lighter and I felt free but as anyone knows who has been through a breakup or any sort of healing healing is not linear and it's not just like a you know you go up it's like very much a roller coaster and basically I was feeling really good and then I was um, working, I was doing a delivery for one of my customers and I got triggered and I don't want to say what it was, but I got triggered very, very bad. And um, I went to her again 
and she did the same thing and there I was thinking like all right like this is gonna work and afterwards like I'm gonna feel great and I mean I left her like I was crying at her house and I left and the next day I was crying I was at work and I was crying and I couldn't stop it and I texted her and I said I don't understand what's going on and she said that you know just because the last time you felt really good she said whatever moved inside you whatever like got things moving inside you this time is different and it's causing build up to move and it's gonna be hard and it was hard and it took a lot to move past it but I genuinely believe in it and you might think I'm crazy you might you know say you've tried it and I think it's a waste of time that's your own personal opinion um for me I genuinely think that it did help because anything that puts like I believe that anything that was putting stress on my body was leading to me not having my period simple as that and taking these active steps like as you can kind of tell all of these steps ultimately that worked for me it wasn't just like about my period it was also just about being healthy being in a much healthier place and mindset um and being just more connected to myself and I did all of this and it was hard like self-care is not just taking a bubble bath self-care is hard and when I took all of these steps, it ultimately like all came together. I de-stressed my body and I put it in a place where it felt comfortable for it to have a period again. The weeks leading up to my period, I have to say were the most uncomfortable. I have never ever experienced PMS symptoms like this before. Um, I know that your body fluctuates like before your, your body weight can fluctuate uh, before your period and everything I'm very well aware of that but this was something else like this was I was bloated for like a week and a half two weeks before my period I had like I just had all these PMS symptoms but they were to the max um my weight hi come on come on hi little nugget come here that was a distraction but it's a good distraction um i have never been happier to have my period um i've never been like at a healthier place and while i am still like going through some of the heal you know there's things that will trigger it and things like that for the most part i am in such a better place i'm in such a healthier place my mindset is so much better than it was before so I hope one of these tips helped um, and like I said this is just what worked for me it doesn't mean it's gonna work for you everybody's body is so different and I actually told um, she actually she said she's been following my journey for a while and she followed me and I, we were ta chatting on Instagram and I also like something I want to mention is you know she says she's been stressing about it the more you stress about it like the further away you're gonna be from getting your period back the more you stress obviously it's like gonna put more pressure on you and the less likely you're gonna be to get your period back anytime sooner because in the end there's only so much you can control you can only like you know you can do the best that you can for yourself and as long as you're doing that you know everything else is out of your hands so there's no reason to stress about it because you can't control it it kind of it, I know it's easier said than done trust me I'm the I overthink and overanalyze everything but at the end of the day there's only so much you can do um but that is going to do for you guys I hope some of this helped I hope it wasn't just a tangent a ramble um I was kind of hesitant about making this video just because I feel like some of the methods are just things that are out there online and it's nothing new it's nothing crazy that I did um but if you have any questions at all leave them in the comments down below i'll be happy to answer any questions that you have 
and until next time thank you so much for watching bye